everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my organic bulk food order. I'm excited to be able to do this. I've been talking about doing it for a while, and I finally did a big order that I thought might be, it might be interesting for you, and maybe even helpful um, for me to show you what we actually bought. So before I get into that part of the video, I wanted to share with you the reasons why I order food this way. So I'm gonna give you these in sort of order of importance for me. One of the big problems that we have with where we live um, and having access to being able to buy bulk and also being able to buy organic is just that the options are not really available to us in our local community. Um, we do have a Costco south of us and north of us about a four hour drive and that is something that we do utilize from time to time. This is a much more convenient way for me to get um, our food, to get the kinds of food that we're wanting to get in the quantities that we need. I also believe in being prepared which is partly why we choose this kind of lifestyle and um, so I like to have a six month to a year to supply I prefer a year supply if I can do it on most things that we would absolutely need if for some reason we couldn't access the grocery store or we experienced job loss or our financial situation changed in some way or any of those kinds of um, things to be prepared for I like to be prepared that way so having ordering food in this way and keeping a stockpile of this kind of food gives me a sense of security that I really appreciate. Uh, the, the Another reason is cost. It's definitely cheaper for me to buy my organic food this way than it is if I were to buy the same quantity of it here at our local grocery store. And then I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I really do not like to shop. So this is a super convenient way of for me to basically set up a little mini grocery store in my own house so that I don't need to go down to the grocery store. So it's super convenient. Generally, if you're going to be ordering like this, you need to be part of a local buying club. Otherwise, the shipping costs can be really outrageous. So we are, I'm a part of a club that just one of my girlfriends has set up with a couple of other um, women and we order our food and are able to to um, get free shipping because we order so much at one time. I think the minimum is $1,000. That's total, that's not um, per individual, but $1,000 total, which we are really easily able to do. And I'm sorry, there are gonna be mosquitoes flying around. <laughs> While I'm sitting here, the mosquitoes are absolutely horrible this year and they have gotten into the house just with the kids coming in and out of the downstairs door, which is in an undercovered, cool, shady location and the mosquitoes just love that area. So we always end up with a few mosquitoes in our house this time of year. And this is something that I wish I had done at the very beginning of when I started to shop this way, is to keep track of what you, you eat for a month period. Literally just get a piece of paper and just write down what it is that you buy in an average month at the grocery store and the kinds of meals that you make and what makes up the ingredients that make up those meals and then buy those things. Don't go buy a bunch of beans if you don't use beans. Don't go buy a bunch of rice if you don't use rice. Don't go buy, and a lot of people tend to do this when you think of kind of food storage or bulk ordering or things like that. People tend to buy things that they've heard that preppers buy or that they you should always have in your pantry and that kind of thing. And there's absolutely no point in doing that because you'll never use it and it's just gonna sit on your shelves forever. If you are trying to do a long-term sort of preparedness pantry, that's a different story because you want things that are gonna be shelf stable over a long period of time and those, and you want things that are gonna be sort of high in protein, high in nutrition, and not take up a ton of space. So things like beans and rice are really practical for that kind of pantry, but that's not the kind of pantry I'm talking about. Okay, so that's kind of my little spiel on it. Um, the things that I'm showing you are things that we actually use on a regular basis, but obviously also <laughs> the other thing too is to keep in mind that we have a really large family. Um, we have nine kids now at home, and uh, myself and my husband, Dan, so, the quantities of things that we're buying and the amount of time that they're gonna last us is gonna be a lot different than for most um, for most families. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these things. And also keep in mind, this is the stuff that I use and that I cook with. So don't use this as a template for things that you um, would necessarily buy because like I said, you're gonna to wanna to buy things that your family actually uses. Okay, so now I will show you the fun part of the video is these are hemp hearts and this is, how much is this anyway? 
This is um, 2.2 kilograms, or it says 75 servings of hemp hearts. So what we use hemp hearts for, they're really high in protein, super nutritious, is to bulk up our smoothies. And I also put a sprinkle of these on my salads sometimes. You can use them on yogurt or mixed berries or anything like that. And they're really tasty. The kids don't mind them, so it's a good way to get a little bit of extra nutrient into whatever it is I'm feeding them. So that's one thing. And this is vanilla. So the most of the things that I'm gonna show you here are, are certified organic, but in the case of this vanilla, this is just an all natural vanilla. It's not the organic because I could not afford to buy this much um, organic vanilla. So this is a four liter jug of vanilla and this will probably last me six months at least, if not more. So this is a lot of vanilla. <laughs> So I buy certified organic olive oil and I buy it by the case and I buy it in glass jars. Oh, I should mention one of the other benefits to ordering food like this is the amount of waste is way less than when you buy at the grocery store. And also places like this, and I should mention this is Horizons. That's the name of the company and I'll link that down below. It's a Canadian company. Um, so I'll link that down below, but they will give you options of different sizes of containers. And if you if you look, you can usually tell whether they're gonna be plastic containers or glass containers. And in this case, this is a glass container. So I buy a case of olive oil that has six jars. I think this case had six jars in it. Um, and then I've also found them in metal containers. And this stuff lasts for a really long time in my cold pantry. So I think I have about a year's supply of, of um, extra virgin cold pressed olive oil in my pantry. Uh, this is coconut oil. And this is something that else that I keep a year's supply of. This is a three, almost four liter bucket of coconut oil. And as you guys know, coconut oil is super expensive in the grocery store. It is definitely cheaper to buy it this way. Um, the case that I bought had four of these in it. And while they are plastic containers, we actually use these all the time for all kinds of different things and to store different things. The lids seal on nice and tight um, for storing in our pantry. So these are reusable and recyclable too if you're not gonna reuse them. And I bought four jugs of apple cider vinegar in the glass jar. So my plan is I have made apple cider vinegar before and come fall when the apples are in season, I'm going to be buying a huge bulk order of apples from down in the Okanagan and I'll be making my own apple cider vinegar. So I kind of had two motivations for buying this stuff. One is I'm gonna, I use this in a lot of different ways. I use it with my animals. I use it in cooking. I use it in salad dressing. So we'll go through a lot of this, maybe not four of them by the fall, but close. And then I will reuse these glass jars to store my homemade apple cider vinegar. So that was sort of my rationale behind buying this stuff. Okay, this box is green tea bag, certified organic green tea. So as you guys know, I make Jun tea and I'm going through tea bags like crazy. And it's actually hard to find just plain green tea tea bags in my local grocery store in a container in a size that's gonna make sense for how much I'm making. So this is 80 tea bags and there are 12, no, let me see, there are six. And there are six boxes of this in this box. So this will last me a while. And I actually ended up getting another kind as well, just to try a different one, a Yogi, um, Yogi brand one. And this one is just, choice brand, um, green tea, and that is to make my Jun. Jun is, um, it's definitely less expensive to make your own Jun at home, but it's definitely not cheap if you're using organic tea bags. So that was my rationale behind buying this. Tomato paste. I do can all of my own tomatoes and I make my own salsa, but I don't make my own tomato paste. So I buy cases of tomato paste like this. Um, and this one has 12 cans and I usually keep a six month supply of tomato paste on hand at any given time. And so I ended up with six boxes of the Yogi green tea as well, which we will definitely go through with the Jun tea in our house. Now this is gonna seem a little obscene for the size of bag this is, <laughs> but this is um, cocoa powder, Dutch cocoa powder. And it's actually a Swiss, this one's a Swiss one, I think, was it Swiss? Yeah, and this is a Swiss um, cocoa, so a really good um, cocoa. This is definitely a year's supply of cocoa for our house. And um, I use this in smoothies to make like a chocolate banana smoothie for the kids and in baking. And so this is a year's supply and I just ran out a couple of weeks ago from the bag that I bought last year. So I know that this will last us a while. 
So, oh, this is heavy. Um, so these, this is how ugh, I buy all of my beans and my um, lentils and things like that. This one is, what is this one? I think this one is lentils. Yeah, so this one is red lentils in this bag. So I buy, I have a year's supply of many, many different kinds of beans, lentils, and split peas. They store really super well. I actually just store them in these bags, these paper bags, inside of Rubbermaid containers. I don't get really carried away with worrying too much about um, keeping them oxygen deprived and things like that. So I've never had an issue with even buying flour, for instance, keeping them in these bags, putting them in Rubbermaid bins, and um, just scooping out what I need and putting the lid back on and, and going about my business. I've never had an issue with them going stale or anything like that. And I've actually kept beans up to a couple years like that, and I've never had a problem with it. So that's the way I do it. We don't. I do not get complicated or carried away with food storage stuff. So I bought lentils, dark red kidney beans, and popcorn. And I think I've mentioned this in a few videos before, but I'm a huge popcorn addict. So I always have at least two of these bags going in my pantry at any given time. So this is my number two because I was running low on my first one. And then I also bought, um, two, how many pounds? I bought 50 pounds of organic unbleached white flour. And this time they came in a box with four five kilogram, um, bags of white flour in there which actually works okay because even from a freshness standpoint i only have to i can actually bring up one of these at a time up into my upstairs pantry and then i don't have to be hauling around the big giant bag so i actually don't mind this um, buying it this way and i may actually choose to do it that way in the future and this big giant thing i got two of these these are this is a 10 liter um jug of, of dishwashing soap we go through we don't have a dishwasher so we actually hand wash all of our dishes and i know that might seem insane but we have gone through so many dishwashers we do at least two sometimes three full dishwasher loads of dishes per day so that's why i ended up getting two of these probably i'm curious i've never bought it this way before so i'm curious to see how long one of these jugs is going to last us. But I'm hoping for a while and then that'll give me an idea of how many that I need to buy next time. I've never tried this brand before and sometimes with the natural soaps, I do find that some of them don't have the, the level of suds that I like. So hopefully this one's a good one. Okay, so this is one thing that's gonna need a little explanation because it's a lot of plastic involved but these are sanitary products. So these are pads and we buy a year's supply of pads for everybody who needs them in the house at any given time. Um, and these are free and clear non-chlorine pads that I buy. So, but there's a ton of plastic involved in these and every time I use them, I feel guilty. Prior to, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, I was actually using cloth pads and had used them for years and years and years. And I'm a huge advocate of using cloth pads. I'll actually link a couple of different sites down below for you to go check them out because I'm such a fan of them. That being said, I have to do so much laundry. <laughs> and when our three newest kids joined our family, I had to sort of make some decisions around some things like cloth diapers and cloth pads because we do about three loads of laundry a day in our house and having to have a whole other system going on for laundry just from a stress perspective was a bit too much for me and and I I feel I feel terrible even saying this because I feel like it's such a cop out but I just I've chosen right now to be using um, these pads instead of the cloth pads and I, I suspect that probably once these are all done or I, I may even hold these just from just for my prepper pantry but um, and then get back into using cloth pads again and fortunately my uh, youngest one is now fully potty trained night and day so I'm not having to worry about diapers anymore and don't have to feel the guilt about using disposable diapers anymore. I know lots of people do them. I'm not judging anybody for um, using them, obviously, since I am, um, but it but it is something. I mean, I think if we can use um, cloth in the place of using anything that has to do with plastic or disposable things, that's, that's the best thing we can do. So I am slowly working back to that. And then I also bought, and it's over there, and it's really heavy, so I'm not gonna go grab it, but I bought another 20 pound, <laughs> 25 pound bag of um, of Basmati brown rice. 
I always buy brown rice from the nutritional uh, perspective of it. It's just it's just better for you than white rice. But um, I find that with the short grain brown rice, the really, really chewy stuff, while I really like it, my kids don't like it so much. And the basmati rice is a much lighter rice. So I buy a brown basmati um, organic rice and I keep a year supply of that as well. So that gives you a little bit of rundown on my most recent order and what I'm planning on doing in the fall when I have all of my food um, put up for my um, my canning and my drying and all those kinds of things in my pantry. I will do a pantry tour and sort of show you all the other things that I have. I also keep, um, let's see, I keep vinegars, like balsamic vinegar and white rice vinegar and red wine vinegar and all that kind of stuff. I keep a year supply of that, a year supply of teeny. Um, what else do I have down there? I can't even think what I have down there right now. Um, once, yeah, once my pantry's all ready to go for the fall, then I'll take you on a tour of it and show you what it is that I keep stored. Any of you that follow along with me on Instagram, I've been posting some of the canning that I've been doing and I have done pickled asparagus and I've also done my first batch of fermented asparagus, which I wanted to, I'm just gonna quickly tell you how to do this because it's the easiest thing ever. I don't even need to do a video on it because I can just explain it. Um, you basically, you cut your asparagus to the size to fit into your jar throw in a bunch of garlic and some dill in there if you if you like garlic if you don't don't worry about it if you like dill same thing I put quite a bit of dill and garlic because I love both I cover it with a mixture a brine of salt and water and it's important that the water is not chlorinated and I'll actually put the recipe down below for you just so that you can get the measurements right but it's very little salt and um, water and then you fill up your jar to the top you want to make sure it covers your product put something in there to weigh to weigh it down um, in my case I'd actually wedged in the um, asparagus very firmly into the jar so it wasn't floating up and was able to keep it covered but you can use a little glass disc or or anything else so you just want to make sure that the the liquid stays over top of the top of your product whatever it is you're you're fermenting um, otherwise you're going to get mold on there and then leave it for 7 to 14 days and this was seven days so i and you can see i don't know if you can see that yes you can see that doo, doo, doo. um it's kind of like cloudy and that's totally normal that is actually showing that it's working if the longer you leave it to ferment the more sour it's going to be and it's also going to have a little bit of a fizz to it um, and this is actually really good I didn't I, I don't like it as much as I like kind of a vinegar pickle but I'll just show you what it looks like out of the jar so it loses its color a little bit kind of goes a little bit yellowish but it's still pretty crisp really mm, so good if you've never tasted fermented um, food before, it definitely, the first time you taste it, you're probably not gonna go, mm, yum, this is really good. Especially if you're comparing it in your mind against a vinegar pickle, it's not gonna taste like that. But give it a chance and try it a few times before you judge it because um, for me, it took a couple of tries, even with the asparagus of trying it before I went, mm, that's actually really yummy. And also, um, when you try it, and you're just taking it right out of your storage. So you wanna keep it in a warm, dark place for that seven to 14 days. And you taste it, um, it tastes much better once you've put it in the refrigerator and let it get cold and then taste it again. But this is really good, I, I actually enjoy this. I can say that I prefer um, cucumbers fermented to asparagus, but it's because asparagus is such a strong flavored vegetable, but it's still really good. So actually I'm really excited right now because I've started to be able to pull stuff out of the garden. So I think I canned 10 jars, maybe, yeah, something like 10 jars of pickled um, asparagus and then two jars of fermented asparagus. And then I just started harvesting my herbs out of my garden today and, and I have the dehydrator going and I'm dehydrating those. And my goal is to be able to put up enough of the herbs that I don't have to buy any for 12 months. That's kind of my goal is I'd really like to get to a 12 month pantry and with as many of those things coming off of the property as I can so that's exciting I did get the rest of the garden planted I just finished this morning actually putting what did I put in this morning some more lettuce and some more um, spinach but um, we got the hygge culture beds all planted and I'm going to be doing an update video on the hygge culture because I learned a lot about hygge culture
culture, um, both from you guys and then also from experimenting with actually having it and using it the way that I am. And I have a lot to share with you about that. So that's going to be coming up. And then I'm also doing, and this is um, at the request of my friend Amanda, um, to do a tour of the root cellar and talk about the root cellar. And I'm excited to share that with you because like, because I don't know if, if you guys find this, but there's so many different ways and so much different information out there about how to do anything like having a pantry, for instance, or having a root cellar, any of this kind of like food storage um, slash homesteading kind of lifestyle stuff that it can get super overwhelming and really intimidating. And I'm of the philosophy, which I'm sure you've probably learned if you've watched me for a while, that simple is better, <laughs> trying to keep it uncomplicated um, and sort of as low tech as possible because um, it just makes life so much simpler and you can usually get things done just as well and just as easily by keeping it simple. So the reason that I'm excited to, sh to share my root cellar with you is because my root cellar was built in the 1920s and it's really a traditional pioneer style root cellar which is just basically a hole in a hill. Um, it's been updated over the years and I think that that'll be an interesting thing to sort of show this is what it was originally like, just the hole in the ground. And these are the updates that were made that are sort of, that make it so that it ha it's lasted as long as it has and will also probably last well, well, well into the future. So that's a video that's coming up very, very soon because I know that Amanda is actually just in the process of, of figuring out what she's gonna do for her root cellar. So I wanna get that video out for you, Amanda, and for everybody else who's interested in that. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions for me about um, food storage and prepping and all that kind of stuff, leave it for me in the comment section below and I will try to get some more videos out like this um, in the future. And you can keep your eye out for those videos that I mentioned coming up in the next week. And I hope you guys all have the most fantastic day. I'm really happy whenever I do a video now because I don't do them as regularly as I was, I always feel really excited to get in front of the camera and talk with you because I miss you guys when I, when I don't get a chance to communicate with you. So I hope you all have an awesome couple days until I see you again. Bye everyone.